Hello everyone and welcome back to my colonization series in Kerbal Space Program 1.2.2. In this episode our main goal is to make sure that our Minimus base has enough supplies to hold out until the Duna transfer window where we're going to be doing a lot of our Duna stuff. And so the first thing is to make sure that it has enough electric charge because right now it's out of electric charge. It has solar panels but it doesn't have anything to recharge itself on the nighttime side so we're going to send another one of these carbonite power plants with the drills and the converter and also the carboelectric generator if you recall and the reason I'm not sending the nuclear reactor that comes with colonization is I'm not totally sure that it works with the planetary base ink parts uh, maybe we should just take a look at that but still I think it's good to have this as a system uh, for just general usage anyway. We've got pipe endpoints. I've made sure to put a KS, KIS inventory with a lot of drills, extra solar panels, batteries, antenna, just in case. And there's another one on the other side. But okay, so the question is whether the planetary base, planetary base ink parts have the ability to receive, well, it says logistics consumer. It has that in there. We had this planetary cupola I think and taking a look that also has a logistics consumer but not the electric charge thing right? If we take a look where is our reactor? What we see is this power coupler and power distributor. What we don't have is a power coupler on the planetary base ink parts. So while they can share supplies, I guess, and habitat space, they can't share the electric charge from the PDU. So we will have to use the carbonite power to power the planetary basin parts. Speaking of the reactor, though, somebody mentioned that we should check on the heat situation on the reactor on the moon. I'm sort of worried about even turning to it, uh, given the heat issue that we had before. Uh, so far it hasn't exploded, as far as I know. Maybe we should just focus on this first and wait a while before handling that. Yeah, I think that's probably best. Now this mission has another uh, feature or another side to it. And that's that this Poodle second stage here is also going to bring supplies to our Kerbal in orbit around Minmus. You might remember the Minmus cycler. And it doesn't say, uh, we can't check it right now. But that cycler has a single Kerbal on board who's also going to run out of supplies in 20 or so days. So we're going to send supplies to that Kerbal using this. And also we'll probably use whatever fuel we can from this to transfer into the cycler if there's some extra fuel. Okay, well without any further ado, I think we'll bring this out to launch pad and launch it. Now, we're delivering power to the base, but we're not delivering additional supplies. So the supply mission will have to be separate and I think we're not going to change our supply setup too much. I think we're going to continue with that egg, if you recall the... I forgot what we call that system. The Podmaster. We'll continue with the Podmaster system in order to bring supplies to Minmus. Okay, uh, there shouldn't be any, obviously any crew. Alright. All right, here we go, throttle up, SAS is on, and launch. In the middle of all this, we have a MOHO mission to take care of, so we will turn to that. There is also that other uh, spy satellite that we have headed over to Minmus. That one had the electric charge problem. We'll see how that goes if we manage to get to it. Alright, more than halfway through the first stage. Well past the speed of sound, everything looks good. Okay, separation and ignition. So that stage should be recoverable with the parachutes. Okay, dropping the fairings. Okay, we're not gonna do the entire Minmus transfer with this. What we'll do is we'll do part of the Minmus transfer with this, let the drilling assembly complete its own Minmus transfer because it's got, you know, moon landing levels of Delta V inside of it. 
and then have this complete its own Minmus transfer separately. And that way it'll have more fuel to rendezvous with the cycler. We need that fuel. Okay, we can shut down there for now. Set as target. Looks like we might just be able to, con well, hmm, not quite. I would like to just continue burning straight out, but we can't quite do that. Going to this, the lander, the carbonite power plant has 1,175 meters per second, so that's plenty. I'm going to uh, freely assume that we're not being lied to there. I don't recall anything wrong with that power plant, so we're just going to hope that everything is okay with it. We will be leaving a piece of debris in orbit, and that's this fairing base, that decoupler, and of course some fairing pieces. Okay, that's about half the burn. Let's separate. Uh, I think the electric charge situation is fine. Yep. Okay. Uh, let's just uh, do that decoupling first. Okay. And then change to this vessel. Control from here. All right. Um, node. Should just be prograde and proceed. It's not gonna be 500. Um, I'm just gonna have it point prograde for now and get rid of this node. So taking a look at our supply situation, you can see our base on Minmus has four Kerbals in and only 18 days of supplies. Electric charge, obviously, an issue. Hab is expired for Rodsby for some reason. Oh, 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 no. Okay, phew. All right, uh, I thought it was, uh, for some reason it wasn't letting me thrall down there. Um, Sigmore is in the cycler with 25 days of supplies and 23 days of electric charge. I don't know why Rodsby has this problem here. I hope that can be cleared up. I mean, the others have you know, more than, well, for Hab, they only have 39 days. That's pretty annoying. We might need to send another Hab module before we can proceed with our our Duna missions. I want to make a base on Duna. Oh, well, maybe a base on Ike. Yeah, maybe a base on Ike. Station around Duna. We'll see. Okay, well, this one's all settled. So that's good. Let's switch back to... Oh, let's give it this one an alarm for SOI change. And now to the second stage. Now for this second stage to survive, we have to uncover its solar panels, which are in here. So that's why we have to leave the debris. I could be nice and like... I don't think we can deal. Uh, we're at we're so close to the periapsis we can't really deorbit this right now. These debris pieces. I think I'll just accept that we're gonna have some debris here. Separate. Okay. And RCS sidestep. Oh, I need to. Uh, I don't know if I have any communication on here. Oh, right. So that's a bit of an issue. Forgot about that part. The the carbonite power plant has antennae. This does not seem to except for its own internal one. So we'll have to keep close to the other mission. Timing is a little bit off here. But it looks like we can still hit Minmus somehow. Uh, that's a pretty high approach. Uh, it's 1,600 something kilometers. And we're just going to have to take that. 
in 20 days. So it's on its way with some supplies, and it's just a matter of communication. Let's turn back to the carbonite power plant and make sure its antennae are active. Okay, communication-wise, this seems fine. It's got uh, two antennae here. These are DTS-M1 communitrons, and they should have the range we need. There's the moon. But uh, 692 meters per second, that's a bit tight. I uh, will have to manage our our orbit and landing appropriately. Let's take a quick look at the situation once we get to Minmus because we are going to be coming in fast. Let's see, add maneuver. Um, it looks like it'll be fine. And this is a polar orbit so eventually we'll be able to hit the hit the base. Yep, no worries. Okay, so now we have to launch the supply mission for the base. Remember, there are supplies for the cycler, but we also need supplies at the base, and we'll launch that next. All right, so we're just going to launch a supply master to Minmus, and we'll see how much that is by way of supplies for the base. I, I feel like we don't need all four Kerbals at the base right now. But yeah, uh, in, in, in any case, uh, it'll be within scavenger range. We'll try and land it within 150 meters, so we won't have to directly connect it. That'll be the most convenient way. So here we go, SAS on, and throttle is up, and launch. Okay, it's a bit wiggly because I'm using Smart ASS to control it. But otherwise, seems to be in good order. It's just uh, gimbling on the fun engines. That's a bit rough. I'm gonna let save some fuel here. I think we're going fast enough. All right, uh, let's open the doors. Okay, and separation and ignition should be a good idea. Oh, not that. That. By the way, we did recover the other stage from the Cobnite power launch. So that was successful. Stage value 51,000 returned. Okay, we will allow the egg to deorbit. So, first of all, let's go retrograde. Okay, we will release the egg, go prograde again, looks good, and ignite the engines here for a bit. Alright, we'll coast to Apoapsis and take care of everything there. Let's get the solar panels out, the antennae out and everything. 3,000 meters per second, I don't think we're going to have any problems here. But this is supposed to be returned back to orbit around Minmus and then reused. Let's remember that. I haven't really gotten down to reusing these yet, but they do have the expensive nerves. The nuclear engines. So we ought to. We are carrying some fertilizer. I don't know if we can use it. We're going to have to start uh, launching the regular USI colonization modules to Minmus as well. Nice having the planetary base ink ones there, but there's too much functionality that we lose without the USI colonization ones. Unless uh, the planetary base ink ones have a greenhouse that can make use of fertilizer. Then, and mulch. Then we could be alright. Okay, 16 days. That seems fine. Let's do this particular node. And get to Minmus. I hope there's not gonna be any 
lunar interference here. You can see that the moon is just rising above the horizon there. That's suspicious. We have messages. The egg was lost. Yep. Oh, I forgot to use the extendotrons on the egg's engines. I just kept the engines in. I forgot to extend them out. Didn't hurt, but... Uh, terminal velocity of 6.13 on the first stage doesn't really take into account the pedals as as inducers of much drag, does it? But anyway, we got 30,000 back for that. I, I like seeing my budget above 3 million. I think 3 million is a good number to stay above. Okay, just wrapping it up there. Let's see. I think that's as close as I can make it. 251 kilometers on the miss side. And we can add an alarm for that SOI change. Now we have four different mission pieces headed over to Minmus. One without any way of regenerating its power, the spy satellite. But we'll have to turn away from all of them and to the Moho scanner, which, uh, well, I have some concerns about. We'll see. Let me not jinx it or cause it any grief ahead of time until I know whether it has this particular problem or not. Let's see. Okay, well... It's, um, the signal strength is 9%, and that's what I was worried about. We're nine days to Moho. I don't know if it's going to get worse or if it's going to be all right. Uh, well, we'll just have to see. 9% is not very encouraging. 5%, 4%, 3%. And nada. No probe control. Yeah, I think uh, I think we're done for here. Yeah, smart ASS isn't turning it. It tried to turn it, but the stock system overrode it. Uh, let's see what antenna did we put on here for future reference. And I want to see what this antenna has to say for itself back in the VAB. It's the Computron DTS-M1. We only have one of them. Let's see, did it promise to be able to do this or not? Oh, I just noticed uh, we got a world's first milestone, initiated the first flyby of Moho. Also, we have escaped the gravitational influence of the sun. I don't remember doing that. Um, does going into Moho mean that we've... I mean, we don't have anything going out. So I don't know why it thinks that we've escaped the gravitational influence of the sun. I guess going into an SOI around another planet means that. But does that mean we haven't done that in this series so far? That this is the first time? I don't think so. I don't think this is the first time we've gotten to the gravitational influence of another planet, is it? Huh. Okay, anyway, to the VAB. Well, it doesn't really say anything about its uh, ability to communicate to all of the inner planets or anything like that. That's what I was looking for, if it had promised something like that, but it doesn't. It doesn't say anything of the sort. Just says uh, 2.0G and level 1 DSN is 2 gigameters, level 2 10, and level 3 22.4. That's, I think, as high as anything that we have available to us. So if we can't use this, uh, I guess we could have used two of them, but otherwise there was no way of making it any better except for slap more of them on. We should, we should probably get some more antennae, shouldn't we? I think there was the impression that we have unlocked all technology. We haven't. 
we haven't even come close. You can see there's a lot of technology we haven't unlocked yet. I just haven't been focusing on uh, science. But to be sure, uh, this could be useful right here. Oh no, that's not the... Where, where is the better communication? Oh, here we go. Uh, that's 15G. Okay. But it says level 1 is 5.48 gigameters. Still better than what we've got right now. So if we could get like 20 more science, we could research this. But we can't do it right now. So that's a thought. Also the tracking station. Can we upgrade the tracking station? Um, yeah, I guess... We, we could save this whole situation by upgrading the tracking station, I suppose. It'll cost us 563000 though. But, well, just after I say that I want to say, uh, make sure I have 3 million in there, they're going to force me to drop below that level. Well, hopefully fulfilling the mission... Oh, is there a mission? I don't think there's a mission involved, actually. I think we just sent a, a probe to Moho on our own dime. Well, anyway, we have to be able to communicate with stuff. Uh, if it can't communicate with Moho, it's not going to be able to communicate properly with Duna or Jewel. So let's do this. All right. Now let's check on our Moho scanner. All right. Success. It looks like we're good. It looks like we have a 55% signal strength now. And so all we have to do is actually do the whole orbital thing. And with this, maybe we'll get the science that we need to unlock the better antennae, and maybe more. This should be a suitable polar orbit to do scanning. Might have to lift the periapsis up a bit. But if there's any planet that we would need to drill on in order to replenish our supplies, and to head home, let's say, from visiting it or colonizing it. It's Moho. I don't know about Eve. Let's let's just ignore the existence of Eve for a bit. All right, let's make orbit here. Node, please. We are moving fast. Look at how quickly the sun is moving there. Okay, separation and ignition. It's not... oh boy. Six minute burn time on this stage. Not what I need right now. Okay, I think we've captured. I'm just uh, tilting away from the node in order to make sure my periapsis doesn't go down too much. I think that should do it. Let's see. We've got a high apoapsis right now. We'll adjust that, but we are in orbit, so that's the important part. I don't know why we're still doing physical time warp. We don't need that. Oh, let's get our sciences going. Log visual observations, high over Moho, yeah. Um, I guess we should be safe to transmit. We only have 210 electric charge. We recharge pretty quickly though, since we're so close to the sun. We're too high for multi-spectral scan, but we can um, analyze data. Okay. Uh, oh, we can uh, transmit now. It's 56 science. I thought it was going to take time. but Okay, log magnetometer data. That's 35 science. We can transmit that. Oh, well. Uh, 34 science for transmitting the temperature scan. We've lost communication temporarily because we're, uh, the Moho itself is probably blocking us right now. Let's see. Yeah, Moho's blocking us. Okay, we've regained communication. And um, survey scanner. Perform orbital survey 25 kilometers and... Okay, we need to be more polar, because we're definitely within those numbers, but uh, our inclination is 79. That's not good enough, apparently. But we'll wait until we're over the equator for that. Okay, let's boost up our periapsis. That strikes me as an okay number, and we'll wait until we're over the equator before we try and turn our inclination. 
Okay, that's a legitimate polar orbit, 90 degree inclination to six one thousandths of the, a degree. So now perform orbital survey. Can we upload all of it before the electric charge runs out? Uh, aborting transmission. Um, I sense we might have a problem here. Uh, maybe if we go tail to the sun, we might get better results on the recharge rate because any stuff is blocking it. Okay, science added, survey data complete, and we have the results here. I know ScanSat will be a little bit better as far as the way we scan things, but I like the convenience of this and, and the science. So if we focus on Moho, we'll be able to see the Lumina, Dirt, Exotic. Oh, we should increase the cutoff. Carbonite, little patches, nothing spectacular. Metallic ore is pretty good. Monazite. Well, if you want monazite, this is the place to get it. Ore is not too bad off. Rare metals, polar. Silicates. It's far more patchy than some of the other locations we've scanned. No water. Or at least not at this level. Uraninite, though. Looks like uh, these two craters are pretty good with well, with uraninite, with silicates, with uh, monazite, with uh, metallic ore, gypsum, the fancy stuff. Not alumina though. Okay, I think we've done it. Uh, we'll just leave it uh, hanging around here. Oh, we can do the mystery goo. That'll be good. Doesn't quite get us to 600 signs though. 25.4. It's conceivably possible that we could have trans uh, transferred this back over to to Kerbin and have a uh, Kerbal get that science. On the other hand, we could transfer this to some other location like the Eve system or maybe beyond and do some more science with the other instruments. We've got uh, 2,888 meters per second to play around with, but we'll leave it here for now. Let's go to the tech tree and unlock better antennae. Let me just make sure I wasn't desperately needing some other stuff at this level. This is just fuel tanks and containers it looks like. I wouldn't mind having the Mark II crew cabin and docking port to make a nice Mark II plane. But not exactly what I've been working on recently. Heavy landing I like. We could use those Space Y landing legs. That big heat shield could be very handy and if we gotta make planes like maybe a shuttle or something those landing gear would be nice but for a real shuttle we'll need larger parts the mark mark four parts i think are uh it's mark two parts Mark four parts are somewhere well these that's a mark four cargo bay so some of them we've already gotten large sas the malamute this is the Malamute. That might be the next thing we would unlock. Rover's technology. This is all rover technology. Unmanned tech and then this is electronics. Mainly that Commutron HG55 and that relay antenna. That's good too. Same power. The Probodobodyne Octo 2 is really nice. I do like its compactness. You can make some really nice landers with it. 
Okay, but yeah, communication seems to be the thing. Let's go with this. Okay, we are with our Minmus spy satellite and we are in Minmus SOI. We've got another world's first milestone. We entered Moho orbit, gathered first scientific data from Moho and escaped the... Why did we escape the gravitational influence of Moho? I don't remember doing that. Oh, I guess maybe one of our stages did, but um, I didn't realize that counted unless it had a controller, but all right, all right whatever it says. Uh, so we still have the core on uh, power down during time warp, so that should save our electric charge. Our goal is to, let's take a look, uh, long-term orbital reconnaissance. Uh, we have to have the little brother surveillance camera. And then we have to do um, recon data from low orbit, low orbit over Mimis's southern hemisphere and northern hemisphere. The question is, how much electric charge will that cost me? But first, let's get into orbit. Oh, wait. Uh, our other mission is also coming in, the Supply Master. Well, we'll we will do this first, I think. I... I think that'll be safe, maybe? Don't delete on close though, we need to remember that. An hour and 35 minutes. Well, it should be in here with us somewhere. There it is. We can watch as it approaches Minmus as well. Maybe? Within a reasonable... Oh, designated polar orbit. Hold on, hold on. It says designated polar orbit. Um, Jebediah, Kerman's junkyard, and spacecraft parts. I think that's the orbit, right? Um, yeah, that's the orbit. Really tight, too. That should be good enough. Alright. Back into time warp mode. Still don't have any idea where the supply master might be. Oh no. I think we got into the orbit going in the wrong direction. See, it's got it going like this. We're going the other way around. We're going to have to flip. Uh, okay. Let's, um, no, let's get rid of this one. Okay, well, we will add that maneuver in and turn to the Supply Master, which may be already in trouble. Well, it's still descending. That's uh, positive. That's good. It's the right direction. And we are polar. We could do with getting a little bit closer, though. Okay, let's make orbit. Uh, are we going to get there before the maneuver on the other probe? No. Okay, well, let's make a getting into orbit maneuver here. No, but wait, that says inclination 88.2 degrees. But the line is going in the other direction. Pretty clearly. I think the argument of periapsis or something is, you know, will that make it flip around? No, well, it's definitely not satisfied with that. Okay, uh, retrograde. Let's just straight up flip our orbit. Okay, well, uh, maybe we have to tilt our orbit somewhat. We're a little bit off now. We do appear to be going in the correct direction anyway. And we're in a very nice low orbit. Oh wait, the supply master needs to be dealt with. Okay, hold on. So much to do. 
let me add a maneuver there to correct our inclination. I guess that's the only problem with our orbit right now. So, yeah. Add that alarm. Lost 40 electric charge so far. And to the supply master. Okay, point to node and burn. Wonder if we could land this in 10 minutes before we have to turn back to the spy satellite. Um, doesn't look like we've got an easy pass at our base yet. That's where the base is. And then we could make a landing like that. Might have to tilt a bit in this direction because of the rotation of Minmus. Okay, let's add that then. Okay, back to the spy satellite. I don't know why we are spying on our our own colony, but but we're getting paid for it, so maybe it's for a reality show or something. Okay, now it says it's a reasonable deviation from the intended orbit. Okay, well. Let's do one of the recon scans and see how much it takes. Toggle recon. Okay, collect recon data. Ah, uh, 56 science. Seems like it's a lot of data. Well, transmit. Yeah, it's a lot of data. transmitted one but it doesn't have enough electric charge to transmit the second one and we have all the other signs on here too we can't really do them we'll have to send a Kerbal up with uh, battery and solar panels we can do that but not right now I'm gonna have to remember about this satellite but yeah, we'll let it hang out. I'll remember by having the contract here. And we've fulfilled the contract science day from Space Run Minmus. Very good. So, let's just... And uh, we have another contract to... Oh, this has to be... Well, hmm. See, that's annoying. We have this other contract to bring this. That's why we put the other instruments on was to reposition this into this synchronous orbit of Minmus. We should have done that one first, is the thing. Okay, how long do we have to fill all these things? Contracts. Add alarm for that one. Well, we have a healthy amount of time to figure all this out. Okay. We can, we can have a Kerbal get up here and service this and fix the whole situation. Let's turn to the Supply Master. One hundred and fifty meters is what we want. Okay, I think we're basically above it and we're entering render range now. Oh great, we just, we just entered and now everybody refuses to work. That's just... Why would this cause them to refuse to work? I mean, it's just a supply mission. It has nothing... Nothing offensive, I swear. Why would they go on strike seeing this... Instantly decide to stop working? It says, hab, uh, hab home, have home is all good. Oh, well, supplies expired. <laughs> but... But they have more supplies than that, right? I thought so. Anyway, we're bringing more supplies. We've got plenty of Delta V, though. Let's try and get closer. Okay, we are on the surface. And we are pretty close to the base. Let's see. Okay, well, they still don't see the supplies. Hmm. 
Now this did have the scavenging thing. There's the supply vessel. No, that's the Alcor pod. Where's the supply vessel? There's the supply vessel. May it take some time? Okay, maybe it needs a refresh, let's hope. So, uh, I'm gonna go to the Space Center and then come back to it. Okay, well, we've returned and they're still not working. And they still say supplies are expired. Um, got the contract parameters for that. Um, yeah. Alright, well, we'll have to work on this. I must have forgotten something about how this is all supposed to work. But I'll think about it. At this point, I think I should wrap up the episode. We've still got a lot to do with this particular base, but uh, the one thing that I knew I had to do hasn't worked out. Alright, so on that note, I'll say thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this episode. If you did enjoy this episode, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below. And I'll see you next time.